Well, if you're wondering who won the debt ceiling deal, the proof is in the vote in the House of Representatives. The total vote was 314 in favor, 117 opposed. 165 Democrats voted for it. 149 Republicans voted for it. 71 Republicans voted against it, and only 46 Democrats voted against it. More Democrats supported this bill than Republicans, because this was a win for Democrats. That's what it was. The House of Representatives voted not just to raise the debt ceiling, but to actually eliminate the debt ceiling for two years, for the rest of President Biden's first term, for the rest of this congressional term, the Democrats will not have to face the debt ceiling again before they face another election. This was not an easy thing to achieve. The Republicans could have insisted on only a six-month extension on the debt ceiling, one year, so that they could come back one year from now and pound Joe Biden again in a negotiation like this. But Kevin McCarthy gave up because Kevin McCarthy did not want to come back to that room. Kevin McCarthy did not want to be in another highly pressurized debt ceiling negotiation again. And so Kevin McCarthy gave President Biden two full years on the debt ceiling. That is an outcome that was almost unimaginable even a week ago. And it is the proof once again that to govern is to choose, and the choices are never easy. Governing is a job for serious people. There is a certain range of predictability to governing when serious people are involved. Bob Dole was a serious person. He was the Republican leader of the United States Senate for nine and a half years, serving as the minority leader and the majority leader. He never allowed any gamesmanship over the debt ceiling, never. He cooperated with Democratic presidents and Republican presidents, Democratic majority leaders in the Senate to make sure that they could get debt ceiling increases without even requiring a 60 vote threshold in the Senate. That is unthinkable today because the Republicans in Congress mostly behave like Logan Roy's spoiled children. You are not serious people. Joe Biden would love to have had that Logan Roy moment with Republicans. Democrats would love to have that moment. But Joe Biden can't do that. He can't walk out of the room like that because Republicans control the House of Representatives. And so Joe Biden had to negotiate a debt ceiling agreement with a Republican Speaker of the House. I'm going to support the legislation that is on the floor today, and that I support it without hesitation, reservation, or trepidation. Not because it's perfect, but in divided government, we, of course, cannot allow the perfect to be the enemy of the good. And President Biden did an incredibly good job under difficult circumstances in protecting some key priorities and values for the well-being of the American people. The Democratic leader of the House of Representatives, Hakeem Jeffries, is one of the serious people who knows how to govern. Some of his Democratic members of the House who voted against the bill and some Democratic senators who will probably vote against the bill are playing an important part in the ongoing legislative drama in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. Throughout his negotiations with Kevin McCarthy, President Biden had to repeatedly say things like, I won't be able to get enough Democrats to support that item. And Kevin McCarthy had to repeatedly say, I won't be able to get enough Republicans to support that item. And so tonight, 
Democrats voting against the bill, we're actually strengthening Joe Biden's credibility in future negotiations with Kevin McCarthy. And Republicans voting against the bill, we're strengthening Kevin McCarthy's credibility in future negotiations. So everyone involved, people voting yes, people voting no, everyone involved is actually playing their part in solving this debt ceiling crisis in Congress very much including the Democrats who are voting against the bill, each of whom really would vote for it if passing the bill actually required their individual vote, because the Democrats are the responsibility party. In governing, Democrats act responsibly, and Republicans act irresponsibly. The pattern has been set for years now. It was true before Donald Trump, when Republican President George W. Bush came into office and he had a $1 trillion surplus handed to him after the Democratic presidency of Bill Clinton. George W. Bush immediately wiped out the budget surplus with a gigantic tax cut, which fed the deficit and increased the national debt and, of course, eventually required an increase in the debt ceiling, which Democrats did not try to block. Serious high stakes negotiations often include inconsistent statements. In some situations, they might be called lies. Many striking labor unions have at times accepted provisions in their new labor contract that they eventually agree to that they insisted they would never accept. That is the way negotiations work. You use the strongest possible language for as long as you can, and then you adjust. Joe Biden's most vivid apparent inconsistency, which was actually always just a negotiating position, was Joe Biden insisting for months that he would not negotiate. That turned out to be an extremely important negotiating tactic because the very first big victory Kevin McCarthy reported to his members and was still insisting last week was a major victory when he unveiled this agreement was the very fact that Joe Biden agreed to negotiate after saying that he wouldn't. The Republicans scored Joe Biden negotiating as a win. They scored it as a win simply getting in the room to negotiate with the president of the United States. The only negotiators who think being allowed to negotiate is a victory are the losers. When you listen to Republicans who are opposed to the bill, what you will not hear from any of them is how they would have forced Joe Biden to compromise more with Republicans. Same thing with Democrats who will vote against this bill. The most they will say is something general like, I think Democrats could have gotten a better deal in the negotiations. None of those people have ever been in such a negotiation, and none of them will ever give you an example of how they could obtain a better agreement with Kevin McCarthy. And they will never be pressed by interviewers on that point. The new Republican rule now, when voting for a bill, that Joe Biden negotiated and supports is to stress the very craziest Republican ideas that you support that will never happen. That is what Marjorie Taylor Greene did today when announcing that she was voting not just to increase the debt ceiling, but to actually eliminate it for two years, something she said she would never do. She camouflaged her vote announcement on Twitter with a stream of madness, saying, once we pass the debt ceiling bill, these are just a few of the things House Republicans will be able to do in appropriations to take down the deep state, punish Dr. Fauci, Peter Strzok, James Comey, and John Brennan by defunding their retirements, 
terminate all government-funded COVID vaccine programs, disband the 87,000 IRS Army, take down Biden's domestic terror units in the FBI, DOJ, and Homeland Security that target conservatives, punish everyone mentioned in the Durham report for pushing the Trump-Russia hoax, cut funding for all Green New Deal projects, defund sanctuary cities, cancel funding for the FBI's new headquarters in Virginia, defund ATF programs that violate the Second Amendment, hold FISA courts accountable for spying on over 278,000 Americans. None of those things will happen. Even Marjorie Taylor Greene knows that none of those things would happen will happen. But on a day when she is caving and voting for an ag agreement negotiating negotiated by Joe Biden, the kind of thing she said she'd never vote for, she has to camouflage that moment with all that Republican craziness, the crazy stuff that will never happen. That's what at least one, that's what one of the least serious Republicans in history, Marjorie Taylor Greene, had to say. That's what she felt she must say in order to cast a vote today with the Republican leadership, a traditional Republican kind of vote, the kind of thing that Marjorie Taylor Greene and the Donald Trump types called a rhino vote. The reason many of us were worried about this debt ceiling confrontation is that House Republicans appeared to be something much worse than unserious people. They appeared to be utterly deranged when it comes to governing. And it seemed as though many of them were willing to default on the debt. That has never been the case before. We were never worried before that Republicans would default on the debt. When President Obama was in office, Republicans knew that they had to avoid a default on the debt. So we all knew there would be some kind of solution worked out with the Republican Speaker of the House, John Boehner, and there was. It was a compromise in which, at the time, President Obama was forced to give up much more to Republican Speaker of the House, John Boehner, who was measurably better at his job than Kevin McCarthy, who got next to nothing in these negotiations from Joe Biden. This was constantly portrayed including by me, as Kevin McCarthy using the debt ceiling to force Joe Biden to compromise. But last week, I finally began to see it for what it really turned out to be, which was Joe Biden using the debt ceiling to force Kevin McCarthy to compromise. And what we discovered in this negotiation, and what all of the Republicans discovered, including Marjorie Taylor Greene, is that Republicans are afraid of defaulting on the debt which is very rational. We did not know that until the end of these negotiations. And that is why Joe Biden was able to get such a favorable agreement, because Kevin McCarthy knew that in the end he could not allow a default on the debt. And even Marjorie Taylor Greene knew that. So this claim that they had taken the debt hostage, Kevin McCarthy knew was never true because he couldn't keep that hostage. He was going to have to make sure there was a deal on the debt ceiling. Joe Biden took advantage of the Republicans' very rational fear of defaulting on the debt to come to an agreement with Kevin McCarthy that is much better than the kind of budget agreement the president would have been able to get in September when the budget must be renewed and passed by Congress or there will be a government shutdown. Republicans do not fear government shutdowns. They've been there, done that. It was a team effort to force Kevin McCarthy right now to accept this agreement. Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries secretly started a parliamentary process called a discharge petition in the House of Representatives in January that shocked Republicans when they discovered how well-developed procedurally the Democrats' discharge petition was in May when Hakeem Jeffries revealed the strategy of using the discharge petition to, in effect, seize control of the House floor from Republicans and get a vote on a clean debt ceiling bill. All 213 Democrats in the House signed their names to that discharge petition, and it apparently scared Republicans into thinking that it just might work. Democrats signed a discharge petition that they can release a clean debt ceiling bill, and they only need a handful of Republicans. The Democrats needed five Republicans to sign that discharge petition, and they could pass it. 
The Democrats were trying to find those five Republicans, and the Republicans were very afraid that they would find those five Republicans, and that put all the more pressure on Kevin McCarthy to reach a deal with Joe Biden, the kind of deal Kevin McCarthy said he would never make. Joe Biden is the most experienced president who has ever had to negotiate a debt ceiling bill. Negotiating on the debt ceiling is a 21st century phenomenon that only two presidents have really had to do, President Obama and President Biden. At the president's side throughout this negotiation was his highly respected director of the Office of Management and Budget, Shalanda Young, who previously worked on the Appropriations Committee in the House of Representatives, where she earned respect and credibility with Republicans, including Kevin McCarthy. Also on the president's side in these negotiations was Gene Sperling, who first worked on economic policy in the White House under President Bill Clinton 30 years ago. He also served in the Obama White House same with Steve Reschetti, who began his White House service 30 years ago in the Clinton White House, where he was involved in every legislative action on the Clinton agenda. Steve Reschetti also served in the Obama-Biden administration and is now Deputy White House Chief of Staff in the Biden-Harris administration. The president and his negotiating team are serious people. And Hakeem Jeffries is right. They did an incredibly good job. And I'm thankful for the leadership of President Joe Biden in avoiding a catastrophic default. I'm thankful for the leadership of President Joe Biden in finding our way to an agreement that will avoid a hostage-taking situation for the balance of the 118th Congress. And I'm thankful for the leadership of President Joe Biden and House Democrats who protected Social Security protected Medicare, protected Medicaid, protected veterans' benefits, protected education, protected public safety, and protected the American people from the draconian 22 percent across-the-board cuts that House Republicans were trying to visit on everyday Americans. And as a result of that effort, that leadership of President Joe Biden, we're going to be able to get through this hostage-taking situation and ensure that we can continue to build an economy that works for everyday Americans.